I'm so sorry. Watch this. The best highlighter I think that I've ever tried. Round of applause. Oh, every single one of them. Every shade is beautiful. And I can't even, like the smell. Hello everyone, welcome back and happy new year. It's 2023 and I, to be completely honest, I'm not quite ready to let go of last year, yeah? And I'm also not ready to let go of Christmas, which is why I've still got my tree up. It just came and went so quickly. I've still got a list of like five Christmas films that I didn't watch. But here we are, it's 2023 and these are my 2022 favorite products of the year. I do these videos every year. All of the products from last year's video still stands. If you wanna go watch those, feel free because all of those things are still things that I use all the time. I have tried to just put in new entries this year that I've loved all year. There may be some accidental repeats, but we'll see how we go. Me and James got a make your own bubble tea set for Christmas and this is actually the best thing ever. I mean, it's only been a week since Christmas and I've nearly used all of my stuff. <laughs> but hey, it was a great gift. Okay, so primers. These two are not technically primers, but they are moisturizers. And this year my skin has been drier than ever well the past couple of years i've had to moisturize every single day before i put on my makeup otherwise it gets to the end of the day and i've got flakes coming off of my skin this one um can you even tell what this is it was the ember release lay creme sensitive version i found that the original one made my skin a little bit itchy but my skin is extremely sensitive this one i have no problems with clearly as you can see because it's actually at the end of its life. Probably one of the best moisturizers I've ever used. If you have dry skin, highly, highly, highly recommend. And dry sensitive skin, go for the sensitive one. And as soon as I've got through this one, I will be repurchasing this. It just makes your skin look so nice and it feels so hydrated and is such a good base for foundation. And quite often, if I'm honest, if I'm going through like a super dry skin phase, I will just use one of these moisturizers as my primer and not even necessarily go in with a primer. The other one, which is also super hydrating, but a bit more lightweight and not quite as oily, is the Versed Dew Point Moisturizing Gel gel cream. This stuff is also incredible. It's more of like a gel-like consistency as the name suggests, but it's also very hydrating, but this one's a bit thinner. So if you don't want like intense hydration, but you still want your skin to feel moisturized, really recommend this one too. And then in terms of actual primer primers that are advertised as a primer, if you have really oily skin, this Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer Base is amazing. It's quite expensive and you get a little amount, but you only need a little amount. I think I did a whole video on this if anybody's interested, but if you have oily skin and big pores around your nose, this stuff will keep your makeup on. Two more if you have oily skin or even like normal skin. The e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. This is such a good dupe for the Milk Hydro Grip, which I mentioned in last year's favourites. And again, I mentioned this in loads of videos. And the REM Beauty Blurring Primer. The only thing I'm not too keen on about this is the packaging because mine has got so grubby. If you have the under eye blurring balm stuff from REM Beauty, this one is pretty much the same consistency. It's like a, I don't even know how to describe it. Almost like a moussey gel sort of texture. Still feels a little bit hydrating. It's not mattifying as such, but it's not like oily. I mean, I have dry and oily skin. The e.l.f. one is really sticky and like grips to your foundation, so that's a great one. And it's drugstore. And then the final primer that I would recommend is the NYX Plump Right Back Plumping Serum and Primer. Again, if you have dry skin, this one's really good. It's really thin. It leaves your skin slightly tacky. It's a serum-y sort of texture. Um, it just feels really nice and hydrating and kind of feels a little bit similar to the Versed Dew Point Moisturizer actually, but it just, yeah, it fills your skin feels your skin. Leaves the skin feeling hydrated. Really like it. I'm going to use the REM Beauty one today because I've not used it in a while. But yeah, look how weird the texture is. It's kind of strange looking. If I had a bit of fluff stuck on the inside of my nose for that whole intro. <laughs> Happy New Year! Okay, so as you can see with this one, it, it takes a little bit of the shine out of the areas that you put it and it just leaves your skin feeling slightly sort of tacky but without feeling like it's drying it out. My two foundation slash tinted moisturizers slash whatever base products of the year, these two. The NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. How did mine end up looking like this? I don't know. And I have mine in the shade L 4.5 Vienna, which is my shade when I've got a bit of tan on. Currently got a bit of instant tan on my neck. And the L'Oreal Age Perfect BB Cover. I've got the shade Light Beige 02. This has got SPF 50. This is actually kind of a dupe of this. They're both just incredible. This year, again, I was all about the glow, all about the hydration, all about the moisturization. These are both so thin in consistency. They make your skin look really glowy. They're not too thick. They don't look cakey. They don't feel heavy. They have nice coverage. I wouldn't say they're full coverage, but they've got a really good amount of coverage. So those two win it for me with honorable mentions to these three. Um, Two more from the drugstore. Actually, I think I mentioned this last year, the L'Oreal True Match Nude Plumping Tinted Serum. I've got mine in the shade two to three light. Again, so good, so hydrating. 
beautiful stuff. The Rimmel Kind and Free Moisturising Skin Tint Foundation. I've got mine in the shade 160 Vanilla. Again, very similar to the other kind of products, just a nice, hydrating, good coverage foundation. If you have dry skin, you will love this. And this was actually recommended to me by some of you guys. This is the Nabla Skin Realist Beautifying Tinted Balm with Hyaluronic Acid Microspheres. And I've got mine in the shade Light 2. Not only is the packaging really pretty, but this stuff is so nice. And again, super similar to the others. Feels really hydrating, thin, makes your skin look glow and beautiful and just like a radiant goddess without having glitter in it. And I've mentioned all of these in videos. I'm gonna go for the NARS foundation today because treat yourself, it's the new year. I've just done three pumps, but I find that the NARS pumps are like smaller than a regular pump. But while I'm blending this in, let me know down below what have been your favourite products of the year because I think there have been some amazing makeup launches this year and even brands like some new makeup brands or at least like new launches of makeup brands in the UK. We've obviously gained Sephora this year, which is really cool. So let me know, what were your favourites? Like, look at this foundation, it's just so beautiful. Concealer, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Nothing beats the Too Faced one. This has been in my favourites for the past maybe three years. I've got multiple different shades. Um, the shades Swan and Snow for kind of brightening up my under eyes and also for just using when I don't have any fake tan on and the shades Porcelain and Almond for when I am fake tanned. These are actually really similar in terms of colour. These concealers are just the best. They last forever. You get so much product. 15 mil, that's half a bottle of foundation in these concealers. However, if you're sick of me talking about those, honourable mentions go to the Urban Decay Stay Naked Correcting Concealer in, I've got the shade 30NN. This is really nice. I've been reaching for this a lot this year. I love the doe foot. It's kind of like a little curved doe foot. And then, oh my god, the Rare Beauty Concealer I've been using a lot as well. And then this one is almost as good as the Too Faced. It's the Lancome Tan Idole Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. I've got the shade... I don't even fucking know what shade it says because it says IVOC and then 62W500. Like what, why can't they just call it like ivory? Oh, but then, wait, no. I don't even think that's a shade because then on the side it says 110 and then 010. What a shade is this? This has got 13 mil, so a decent amount of products. One of my main frustrations with this, <gasps> I've literally just done it trying to demo you. I thought I was holding it away from my trousers, but no, I've just dripped some of this on two. <laughs> my trousers which are this color that is the main reason why i do not reach for this i'm gonna hold it over here because to get this out it is so like tightly stuck in there that when you eventually get it out it flicks it flicks all over the place long com i know that you're better than that please please fix it but you know what this shade is not good for my under eyes because it's a little bit too dark but I'm gonna put it under there anyway, and I'll put it on my blemishes. The reason I love this is because it feels really thin, it spreads really nicely, and it doesn't crease. I'll blend this out first, and then I'll put a tiny bit of the Too Faced one just to brighten it up a little bit. But it is such a thin concealer. Like, it's just so lightweight feeling, and I find that it just doesn't crease under my eyes. It's amazing. Obviously, I do set it, but it, yeah, it's so good. It does oxidize a little bit. I could probably do with a shade that's actually a little bit lighter than this one, but I still just reach for my Too Faced one all the time. This one is in the shade Swan. The day that I find a concealer that is better than the Too Faced one, it will be a miracle. Because I'm not actually sure that one exists. Please let me know what your favourite concealer is, because... Maybe there is one out there. I have to give an honorable mention to the REM Beauty Concealer. This is concealer in a little pot. I've got the shade Light 4G, and you know what? Let me put a little bit on a spot. It's got really nice coverage. It blends really nicely. It works under your eyes and also on blemishes as well. I really like it. I didn't find that it creased on me when I set it, but holy shit, this, this is one of my products of the whole year out of everything. The Rare Beauty, what shade have I got? Um, It's all rubbed off the bottom. It's the Rare Beauty Contour Stick, uh, Bronzer Stick. I think I, ha I had to be shade happy soul and this i've used tons and i still have a decent amount of product left because you need the tiniest bit it is the creamiest so you just need one swipe like that creamiest cream contour i've ever used by the way, shout out to these two brushes for blending cream products. This is the e.l.f. Putty Primer Applicator Brush and the Morphe MV105. Watch this. It just blends like a dream. It just sort of like melts into your face and you just need such a small amount to give you a really good amount of contour. It's buildable, it's glowy, it's just the most stunning cream contour I think I've 
ever tried and i've tried a lot this one just looks like look at that it just looks so beautiful and so natural and if you want to put on a little bit you can make it look super natural if you want to put in a bit more And then I just go over it with my sponge. Moving on to blusher, I'm sure you can probably all guess what's coming next. The Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blushes are the best blush I have ever used. Still love my Made by Mitchell ones. I still love the Charlotte Tilbury one, but the Rare Beauty one. Oh, and the Beauty Crop ones are really nice as well, but the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Blush in the shade Happy. My favorite shade before was Joy. But the shade Happy at the moment, it's just my absolute fave. Um, yeah, do you see that? One dot. The packaging is also so cute. Like, I love the little lid. The reason I love these, I mean, everybody loves these. I've not seen one person that's not liked the Rare Beauty blushes. But from that little dot, look how much pigment you get. And again, they're not sticky. They're not, they don't go patchy. They're not oily. They don't take off my foundation underneath. They leave such a nice glow. They've got such good amount of pigment. Look at that. Actually, sorry. I said that the cream contour was my product of the year. I actually think these liquid blushes are my product of the year. Look at it. We just need to take a minute for what I'm about to speak about next. Loose powders of the year are the Huda Beauty Pound Cake Easy Bake Loose Powder. And I have something to say about this in a sec. But as well as that, the ColourPop No Filter Loose Setting Powder in the shade Translucent. These are really similar to me. And this was gonna be like my Holy Grail powder that I think I actually like more than the Laura Mercier powder. I do, I like it more than the Laura Mercier powder. However, my skin is very sensitive. A few weeks ago, uh, my skin flared up. I was having a reaction, like my skin, my eczema comes and goes depending on what products I use. It's very sensitive to new things. And I was like, I've not used anything new. Why is my skin flaring up? Why is my skin itchy? Checked all the ingredients of everything that I used on my face the day before. Never in a million years did I think to check the ingredients of a powder because one of the main things that I'm allergic to is called sorbitan. Sorbitan is like a moisturizing ingredient that's used in a lot of primers and foundations and moisturizers and stuff and sometimes concealers and sometimes setting sprays, usually in liquid products. I don't think I've had a powder yet that has contained sorbitan until I checked the ingredients of my Huda Beauty powder and it has the fucking ingredient that I'm allergic to in it, which not that many people are allergic to. There's such little research about it online. I don't know why my skin reacts to that. It could also be due to the fact that this is quite heavily fragranced and my skin and fragrances don't tend to get along that well. So I'm absolutely gutted, but I would still absolutely recommend it. If you don't have a sorbitan allergy it is just so good and i'm actually gutted because i just bought like two of them and they're not that cheap the really interesting thing though it didn't cause my under eyes to react it was mostly like around my t-zone where my pores are the biggest and i think that's probably because the powder kind of like gets into your pores and more into your skin so that area gets more aggravated i don't know but i'm really upset about it i don't want to talk about it but this is my powder of the year it's incredible if anybody knows of a similar powder to the huda beauty ones let me know but the ColourPop one is almost just as good it's just not quite quite as good at keeping my makeup on without creasing but i love this powder and oh my god you know what else i love the primark powder puffs that look like this and i find that the best way of stopping my under eyes from creasing is just pushing in some of this powder straight after i've blended out my concealer this powder is brightening it is so smooth it sets everything so well it's just great and I don't see that many people talking about it. Doesn't have flashback as well, which is the main thing and it's really affordable too. I think this was also in last year's favorites, but just quickly, the MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation. I've got the shade NC20. I've used this loads and you can see actually, I think I'm about to hit pan on it. Like it's got quite a big divot in it, but I keep this in my handbag all the time and it is so good for touching up throughout the day. And if you have a spot, like my favorite way to use powder foundations is if I need a little bit of extra coverage under my eyes or on a blemish, but it's so good for areas where you want to add like a little bit of extra coverage. So shout out to that again. Powder bronzer. I have two new contenders, the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in the shade Bronze 01. This stuff is just stunning. I think it's gonna last me for absolutely ages because it's like a domed product and you need such a small amount but it adds a really nice sort of like sheen it's not fully matte it's got the slight hint of like glow in it I don't even know if you can really see that but not glitter at all but it's just such a nice bronzer it reminds me a lot actually of my favorite Kiko baked bronzers so this bloody love it and then also as well i've been finding myself reaching for the charlotte tilbury bronzer loads since i got this this is the airbrush bronzer and i've got the shade two this is refillable which is really cool but did they really need to make it so big i don't know why i keep reaching for this to be honest i think it's because the color is so nice um but it is a matte bronzer which i have to say they're not always my favorite but as matte bronzers go this is a really nice one and i just keep putting it in my makeup bag i guess because i'm quite fussy with bronzers and some matte ones go really patchy but this one doesn't and i really like the color of it 
I'm just gonna use a little bit on my nose. It's not a contour shade, but I just use bronzer for contour. I love a blush palette. I always like to have one of these in my makeup bag whenever I go anywhere so that I can use the mirror, although I really need to clean this one. This is the Beauty Crop Cocoa Rose Face Palette, but where did the writing go? Packaging does not win because all the writing came off, but I have been loving this color here. They're all matte apart from this one. This one's like a peachy glowy sort of one, but this one is like that Dior Kylie Jenner cool tone pink blush, stunning. And then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, Charlotte Tilbury kill it with their palettes. They're 60 pounds, so expensive. Do not need it, but if you are a Charlotte Tilbury fan, like not only is the packaging of this beautiful, their blushes and highlighters are just stunning. And I've actually used the highlighter loads as well, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put on this one, the pink. You just need a tiny bit. And that one is matte. So then what I like to do is take the glowy Charlotte Tilbury pink thing on the same brush that I did my blush with and just add a bit of glow. And some days I don't even use a separate highlighter because I just use like this blushy, glowy topper thing and it's just beautiful. In terms of individual blushes and not palettes, the Kiko ones, they are so affordable. This one in particular, the shade 02 of their Unlimited Blush, it's so small and compact and easy to just chuck in your makeup bag. It's a the most perfect sort of like peachy pink blush shade and it is a matte one and then also these ones which are even cheaper this one is such a sim similar shade but it's a bit brighter it's their smart color blush in 05 these are so cheap i think they're less than five pounds so if you're on a budget and you're looking for some really good blushes have a little look in kiko because they do some amazing ones highlighters massive shout out to the nabla skin glazing in the shade ozone i use this quite a lot and it oh my god it is just beautiful you know what i'm gonna put some of this down my nose oh <gasps> You just need the tiniest little bit. And to be quite honest, I still have been using my uh, highlighters with Revolution loads, but I've mentioned them enough times. This is an incredible, wet looking, glossy, not cakey looking highlighter. It is just delicious. But oh my God, the best highlighter I think that I've ever tried is the Half Magic Light Trap Enter the Glow Duochrome Glow Powder. It looks really weird in the pan because of the color sort of change from where I've used it. And the packaging is actually recyclable, which is really cool. And it looks like this. The formula of these highlighters, let me just put it on. Um, This shade would be too dark for me when I don't have any turn on but when i do have a little bit like today like oh my god it just over the top of blush it just makes your cheeks look wet and glossy and luminous and radiant and it catches the light in the most beautiful way half magic is made by donnie davy who's the head makeup artist at euphoria and she killed it with that brand because oh my god this highlighter like look at that it's just unbelievable it is so good Random thoughts. For my eyebrows, there is nothing in the world that bees. The NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. I've got the shade Ash Brown. I've threatened NYX before, and I'm gonna threaten them again. NYX, if you ever discontinue this, I will hunt you down. That is definitely a joke, NYX, I love you, um, but just please don't discontinue these because they are the best brow products ever. Actually, the way that you could make them slightly better is if you make them waterproof, then no one else would be able to compete ever in the world. But even so, it's not often that I go dunking my face in water when I've got my brows on. So they are just the best. You can create the finest little strokes and every other brow pen that I've tried dries up after like one use. The NYX ones just seem to keep going and going and going. It's amazing. It doesn't get all like clogged up with your foundation, which again, every other brow pencil pen that I've tried or most of them, they just get clogged up if you try and do your brows over the top of your foundation. And I'm not the type of person that likes to do my brows before my foundation, so these just work so well for me. And you can draw in your little hair strokes, like look at the difference between the eyebrows. This was definitely my last year's favourites by the way, but I don't care, like there's nothing that beat it. <laughs> in terms of pencil, I love the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Cheat. Um, I still love the Benefit Precise in My Brow, but if you're looking for something different. And this is also refillable, which I love that Charlotte Tilbury's doing that with quite a few different things. Um, I've got the shade Natural Brown and I find that it works so well with my hair colour and it has got such a skinny little nib that you can just get the finest little strokes with it. It's such a good brow pencil. And then in terms of brow gel, I don't even think they make this anymore, but it is the Authored Brow Gel, and I've got the shade 2 Mid Brown. This was Tanya Burr's makeup brand, but everything on their website has been out of stock for ages, so I don't know if maybe the brand is over, but this reminds me so much of the Glossier Boy Brow. It has a bit of a tint to it, and it's kind of almost like a bit waxy, so it keeps your brows in place. And then in terms of clear brow gels, the Beauty Crop BFF X. XL Brow and Lash Mascara Duo. I never use the mascara side. I don't think I've actually ever used the mascara side, but I think they've got the same product in them, but it's such a sticky consistency that it like holds your brows in place. Oh crap. It's kind of like soap brow, but in a brow gel. Oh no, I've just put way too much product at the front of my eyebrow. I had too much of the NYX thing and I was trying to blend it out with that brow gel, but it's all just smudged it into a big, 
into a big old mush of product, which I did not want to do. I would usually just use one of these brow gels instead of all of them. And then also as well, I love the Nude Sticks Brow Boost and Set Gel XL. This was launched in collaboration with Kathleen Lights. And it's kind of like a clear gel, but it's got like a tiny hint of color, but not really enough to actually like do a whole lot, to be honest. It's kind of just clear. But oh my God, this stuff keeps your brows in place. It's not as sticky as the Beauty Crop one, but it dries and just like, yeah, your eyes will, your eyes, your eyebrows will not go anywhere. <laughs> I tried to run some through the other side, but the Beauty uh, Crop stuff has dried and they're just stuck. So they're all Great, moving on to the eyeshadow. Let me just zoom you in. First of all, if you're looking for a good eyeshadow palette that's affordable, any of the Beauty Bay releases that are kind of like their, not like their regular, I mean their regular ones are still great, like their nine pan and 18 pan palettes and stuff, but the ones that are sort of this shape that they release every so often as like part of a collection, they are all so unbelievably good. Like the Wilderness palette, mostly for the shimmers, like the shimmers in these are just, for the price, they're incredible. Dark Fantasy Palette, which was launched, I think around sort of like Halloween time. Oh my God, it's just stunning. Okay, look at the shimmer. And wait, let me do another shimmer as well. Let me do the green shimmer called Machine. I just can't, I can't, I can't. How can these palettes be so affordable and be so good? Unbelievable. And then the Book of Magic Palette as well. And not only do they usually have really cool designs, like the shades, they're just gorgeous. Like this crystal color. It's like a duochrome. Oh, they're just amazing. Massive freaking shout out to the Made by Mitchell Hey Swirl Friend palette. You just get five shades in here, but you can mix these with their mixing medium or any mixing medium and turn them into eyeliners. And the main reason I'm mentioning this is for this shade. Actually, the silver is incredible as well. And oh my God, this. Let me just give you some swatches. I have swatched these before, but <laughs> the blue called Eclipse is one of the most stunning eyeshadows in the world. Um, Oh my god. I put this over the top of a black eyeliner and it was just mind-blowingly beautiful. And Mitchell is killing it this year with all of his releases. His blush in Sweet Cheeks is slowly overtaking peach sugar for me. Eyeshadow palette of the year goes to this. I have never been so mind blown when I tried an eyeshadow palette. This is the Kaleidos Escape Pod palette. This palette, you're about to see the shimmers are actually like otherworldly stunning. Like Pat McGrath level stunning, but nowhere near as expensive as Pat McGrath. I've just swatched a couple of shades there. Hello. Last time I used this, I did a look with like the purples and pinks. Today, I'm gonna use those greens. They are actually really similar, but one of them's a bit more of like a, I guess like olive green. The other one's more of like a duochrome paler green. I might use this blue as well. I base, I'm using the Beauty Bay one. I love this. In my opinion, works just as good as the Anastasia one. I'm gonna take the blue, which is called Exoplanet, which is this one. I'm gonna pack some of this on my outer and inner corners. Well, that looks weird. <laughs> I'm putting some on my outer corner as well. At the moment, I'm just placing it. I'm not gonna blend it yet. I'm just taking a smaller amount of that on a smaller blending brush. I'm just gonna start to blend the edges out. And I'm just winging that out. Cool. I've just got a tiny bit of like extra that I don't really want there. So I'm just going to try and take the shade Lo-Fi, which is this like peachy color. Just blend over that inner edge. I'm going to take the shade Galactic Gala and I'm just going to take some on my finger and I'm just going to put that all over the center of the lid and kind of blend it onto the blue shade. Oh my God. Same on the other side. That shade by itself is stunning, but I kind of wish that I'd use the other green first because this one is almost like a slightly sheer green and you can still see like the shade of my skin a little bit underneath so what i'm actually going to do is just take a little bit of this other green which is called saturnalia and i'm going to put that on the edges sort of like over the top of the blue and yes this might turn it into a fully green look but that's what i was going to do originally and the blue was just sort of like my base because there's not actually like a matte green in here but i'm just actually bringing that pretty much all over the blue. I think I might go in with a bit of the blue over the top of this just to bring back a bit more depth, but I really want the whole look to be like sparkly. Do you see what I mean when I say they're Pat McGrath level shimmers? Let's go back in with a tiny bit more blue. I'm just taking some of that blue onto my lower lash line and then taking the same green all along there too. And then on my very inner corners, I'm taking the shade Starlight Sonata, which is this one, which is one of the most stunning pinkish glittery shimmers I've ever seen. 
I feel like I've just stepped out an episode of Euphoria. In terms of pencil eyeliners, the KVD Tattoo Pencil Liner is an incredible black, super, super black, twist up, waterproof eye pencil if you're looking for a good one. And if you're looking for some cheaper ones that are also amazing, the NYX Epic Wear Liner Sticks are unbelievable. I mean, I've mostly used the white one, the black one, and then this beautiful sort of like smoky khaki color. And you know what? I'm gonna use All Time Olive today in my waterline. My top eyeliners of the year. When I've just been doing my own makeup that's not sort of for creative makeup looks that I'm doing on camera when I'm just going out and I wanna look, you know, my best. I've been using brown liner. I've been using the Benefit Roller Eyeliner all year round. This is the brown one. And I do really like this. I love the color brown of it. It's like a really nice chocolatey brown that's not too warm, not too cool. And it is a nice eyeliner. However, one that I recently discovered, but it's made it into my favorites, is the Fenty Fly Liner. This one is in the shade In Big Truffle. This one is a bit more of a warm tone brown but the applicator of this one is better than the benefit one it's slimmer it's a bit more liquidy it doesn't drag as much that's those two there that's the Fenty one that's the benefit one so those are both great in terms of black eyeliners I've got two winners the rare beauty perfect strokes matte liquid eyeliner this one is so good it's like a thick bristle brush but you can get thicker lines you can get thinner lines with it and it's super black it is just such a beautiful eyeliner and it lasts really really well as well the winner is is the Vive Power Ink Liner. This is pretty much the same as the KVD liquid liner to me, if not a tiny bit better. It is just so long lasting, so black. You can get such fine little lines with it. It's just an incredible like bristle brush eyeliner. I absolutely love it. It is just so easy to use. It is just such a good eyeliner for doing like neat, precise, graphic liner looks and stuff. So good. Individual eyeshadows that deserve a round of applause. The Makeup by Mario. Mentioned this last year. Master Crystal Reflector. It is the most beautiful glitter, sort of topper, shimmery, fine, glittery, beautiful thing. I don't think this will ever not be in my favourites. It's just unreal. And then something similar is the Urban Decay Moon Dust eyeshadow in... Space Cowboy is a very similar kind of thing, but just a slightly different shade it is this one here. And then if you're looking for a dupe for this, but the formula is ever so slightly different. It's the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Ritz. And this one is so similar to the Urban Decay one. It just takes a little bit more building, like a, probably like a second layer, but the ColourPop one is this one right next to it. They are so similar, but they're all absolutely beautiful. I'm just gonna use some lash glue and stick on a couple little gems like on the inner corners. I'll be right back. There we go. I just stuck a couple of little gems on. Before we do mascara, setting spray. My setting mist of the year is the e.l.f. one. I've literally just finished this bottle. I've just started my new bottle. It's the e.l.f. Stay All Night Micro Fine Setting Mist. Not only does this have such a beautiful fine mist, this will keep your makeup on. It sticks your makeup to your face, survives the smudge test. When I put eyeshadow on my arm, I spray this. It literally doesn't smudge. Like it is so good. But it's more of a matte finish, this one. If you are looking for something that gives your skin a glow, if you have dry skin and you want to make your makeup look less powdery and more skin-like and more glowy, these won't actually hold your makeup in place for longer. The Half Magic Dew Look Hydrating Set and Refresh Mist. This is incredible stuff, but it doesn't like stick your makeup to your face. And same with the Vitamin Babe Beauty Crop Hydrating Dual Phase Setting Mist. These are both so good. They've both got slightly sort of oily formulas. They both have a nice fine mist. The Beauty Crop one I've probably used the most recently, so I'm not gonna use that one today. I'm gonna use the Half Magic one because I've not used this in a while. You know what, just for the purpose of the video, let me just go back in with some powder. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm looking matte. So, I do it before my mascara so that it doesn't smudge all over the place. If you have oily skin, I would not recommend this, but if you have dry skin, can you see how it's just made my skin look a lot more glowy and hydrated and it takes the powderiness out of your makeup? However, I do find it sometimes a bit much, so what I usually would do is just go back in on my T-zone, leave it sort of like glowy on the outer sort of parts of my face. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Two mascara winners at the complete opposite ends of the price scale. This YSL mascara is unbelievable. It's called the Lash Clash Mascara. It doesn't smudge. A high-end mascara gives length, crazy volume, 
and it doesn't smudge. I'm pretty sure this is a tubing mascara. I could be wrong, but that's how it sort of performs. And then the Maybelline Sky High, this is the Cosmic Black one, so it's even blacker than the original. This wins for yet another year. Actually, the Cosmic Black one only came out this year, but should we put one on each? I mean, it's a little bit more difficult to see because I've got such heavy eye makeup on, but. Also, a massive shout out to the L'Oreal Telescopic. I've used that loads this year as well. I tend to usually always go for drugstore mascaras because I find that a lot of high-end mascaras have like more sort of oils in them and they tend to smudge on me throughout the day both of these do not do that and i mean don't get me wrong some drugstore ones do as well i'm actually running out of this i need to get a new one the good thing about maybelline one is you can just kind of keep building it and then on my left eye let's do the ysl the brush on this one is quite big thing is i don't mind a big brush as long as the mascara works but this one is a thick brush and actually gives you thick lashes like you don't need it it's not an essential but if you're a high high-end mascara type of person Person, I would definitely recommend giving it a try. It's kind of hard to tell because of my heavy eye makeup, but those are the lashes on both sides. For lip liners, the Rare Beauty ones, every single one of them. Every shade is beautiful. I've got four different shades that I like here. They are twistable, so you can just chuck it in your handbag. You don't need to bring around a sharpener with you. The colors are so nice. The formula is so nice. They smell nice. They're creamy. They're long lasting. I love the Rare Beauty lip liners. And I will show you all of those in a sec, but I also love the Kiko Everlasting Color Precision Lip Liner. This is the shade 402. Again, retractable. I love a retractable lip liner. This is such a nice sort of like nudie brown color. Let's just swatch all of them, shall we? So that was shade 402. The REM Beauty. Beauty lip liner. This is the lip pencil in the shade Harmonies. Again, these are retractable. I would say that the REM Beauty ones are more sort of long lasting. Oh my god, this is so similar to the Kiko color. <laughs> this one is slightly more of a cool toned pinky brown. The Primark lip liner in the shade Toast. These are a pound. One pound and i love this color it's like a medium brown and then the rare beauty ones i've got in the shade worthy which i'm gonna swatch them from so that one is worthy the next ones will go in order pink toned nude then we've got humble which is even more pink toned fun which is more of like an orangey brown and then lastly we have got the shade talented which is like a cooler toned beigey brown nude so those are all of the lip liners there i'm aware that some of them look really really similar i would say my favorite of all of the rare beauty ones is probably the shade worthy so i'm gonna put that on now it's actually pretty similar to my lip color which is probably why i reach for this one the most Ugh, i just love them and i love how easy they are they can just twist them up like that and then in terms of lipsticks the matching very beauty lipsticks are so nice these are like on par with charlotte tilbury lipsticks for me uh again i've got the shade worthy which let's swatch it next to worthy on here and then i've also got the shade talented which i've swatched them under the corresponding lip liners they're both just so nice. Worthy is this one, talented is this one. This one's a bit more brown. This one's a bit more of like a pinky. My lips were better for me. Let's go with the Worthy lipstick as well. They are matte, but they're such a beautiful creamy matte that doesn't feel too drying. Obviously, I can't not talk about some tinted lip balms. I think this was in last year's video. I could be wrong. Bare Minerals Lip Gloss Balm and in Ingenuity. This was lip products of the year. Like, look how tatty and gross the packaging got. All the paint is chipping off. I've spoken about this so many times on my channel, but oh my god, it's just the nicest feeling lip gloss ever, and it's such a pretty colour. It feels so hydrating. It's not sticky at all. It's the best. The Sculpted by Amy Hydra Lip in the shade Brown. Bronze. I've had this in my handbag for quite a while now and I always just put this on again They smell nice. It is so creamy. It's so hydrating. It's a really pretty color. It's glossy It's this one here. Love this, but oh my god vive lip dew I've got the shade rosa and pesca. I keep pesca in my handbag and I can't even <laughs> Like the smell. Okay, not only do I want to eat that applicator, like they're just so juicy looking. It's like a little chubby rounded doe foot. The smell of these are the nicest smelling lip product I have smelled in my life. That could just be me that thinks that, but this smells exactly to me like an old Barry M strawberry milkshake lip gloss that I used to have, but I got free with an impost fragrance. I know very specific, but such a nostalgic smell. And to me, these smell like that smell. Oh my God. It is just such a nice smell. And I think that's why I love these so much and also the formula of these lip oil glosses they are not sticky in the slightest they are so hydrating oh they just i i love them i can't even explain to you how much i love these vive lip juice jamie has killed it with vive and their products i've mentioned before they just keep getting better and better like when they first launched there was a couple of like teething issues but the vive products now are just 
The Vive ones have got very little colour, so that one there is Rosa. It's just got like the tiniest hint of colour. And then Pesca. It looks like it's going to be orange. It just kind of comes out clear, to be honest. That's those two at the top there, and those are all of the lip swatches. For my eyelashes, I still use my Falscara. If I'm like going to an event or something, a lot of the time I just want something on my outer corners. I use the Kiss Falscara, and I wore this to like every wedding that I went to in the summer, because you just put the glue stuff actually on your lashes. The only thing is, the glue stuff can sort of like stick they stuck to your lashes so you want to make sure that instead of using micellar water once you've kind of like taken off the lashes I'd recommend going in with like an oil cleanser just to get rid of all the glue otherwise it kind of like sort of stick in your eyelashes but I bloody love them I'm gonna take two long ones and maybe two medium let's do the long ones first and then they do other styles as well. These ones are probably the most natural looking ones. And these are how the lashes look. You can barely tell that I'm even wearing lashes, but it just gives like a little bit of extra volume on the outer corners. Oh, and then you go in with the seal stuff to sort of make them stop being sticky. Those were all of my favourite products of the year. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I mean, I probably have. Let me know what yours are. If you like this kind of video and you want to see more makeup content throughout the year, feel free to subscribe. It is free. I really hope if you guys didn't have the best 2022, I really hope the 2023 is better for you. And I hope that it is our best year. Yeah, I have got a good feeling about 2023. Thank you for all of your support in 2022. I had a really good year on YouTube and I'm so lucky to have so many people that keep coming back and watching my videos and and if you leave me a nice comment then thank you so much i read my comments all the time and i quite often reply to people so thank you so much guys for just like sticking around and enjoying my videos i'm very lucky to have such a nice group of followers so i hope you guys are good and i will see you in my next video bye